Now we begin with the COVID-19 situation here in South Korea. As the virus continued to spread nationwide, hospitals are really feeling the strain due to the increase of patients, particularly those who are critically ill amid the shortage of ICU beds. Yes, for more on uh, COVID-19 related updates, we have our reporter Kim Yonsung joining us in the uh, studio. Morning, Yonsung. Good morning. So the government is doing what it can, at least, to try and alleviate some of the burden on an extremely exhausted uh, medical uh, staff here in South Korea. Tell us more about what they're trying to do. Right. So before I get to get into that, let me just start off with explaining what it seems like out there. So uh, it's quite a, di a dire situation. Uh, hospitals are barely keeping their heads above water with the influx of critically ill COVID-19 patients. Seoul National University, for example, is pivoting into an emergency system and it's focusing on acquiring more ICU beds and treating critically ill patients. They're also postponing non-emergency spine, joint, brain and heart surgeries because there's little room left in intensive care units. But this hospital isn't the only one forced to make this choice. I had a chance to talk to a medical frontline worker yesterday afternoon. Take a listen to what he said. Hospitals in Seoul and Gyeonggi-do province are probably all going through a similar situation. We need ICU units to care for patients after surgery, but because there are normal units left, we can't perform surgeries. The South Korean government has put down special orders to create extra breathing room for the struggling healthcare system. It's urging hospitals in the capital to transition into special COVID-19 care facilities and deploying army doctors and public health specialists to COVID-19 medical front lines. But a medical expert says that these efforts won't cut it. According to this expert, the extra personnel being deployed are often not fit for care, fit to care for critically ill patients, and the extra beds acquired are not nearly enough to accommodate not only the COVID-19 patients, but also the overflow of patients that tend to increase during the winter. Instead, this expert claims that the government needs to help in other ways. There needs to be a computerized system that helps manage the patient's beds. There also needs to be more funding allocated to hospitals so that they can run the quarantining units. Right. Well, keeping that in mind, Yunsin, where do we stand in terms of the latest COVID-19 tally? Well, the numbers slightly shifted down from Sunday night's tally. Health authorities logged 4,239 new COVID-19 infections up to 9 p.m. Monday, which is more than 600... 50 cases fewer than the tally marked on the same time Sunday. Okay, well, that uh, seems perhaps it might be an anomaly, but it appears that to be going down a bit compared to last week anyway. Uh, let's move on to vaccines. I hear there's a new study in the process of coming out on the horizon, so to speak. Right, so Moderna revealed on Monday some promising results about uh, their booster shots providing extra protection against the Omicron variant. Moderna said that the company's lab test showed that after a half-dose booster shot, the level of neutralizing antibodies that are able to fight against the Omicron strain jumped by 37 times. A half-dose booster is typically administered to most people, but a full-dose shot, usually given to people with a weakened immune system, showed even more promising results in antibody levels. A full dose triggered a, an 83-fold increase in antibody levels, but it did accompany extra risk in terms of vaccine side effects. It's important to note that these test results are just preliminary and have not yet gone through comprehensive scientific review. Also, antibody levels are just one indicator used to protect vaccine protection, but they do not speak for the entire efficacy and Im immune protection of the vaccines. Right, and I just heard that um, Europe just paved the way for a new vaccine to battle the combat against uh, increasing infections. Is that right? Right. So the European Union actually gave the green light to Novavax's vaccines for people aged 18 and older. The European Medicines Agency, or the EMA, said that the vaccine showed 90% efficacy, while its protection against some variant strains, including Omicron, is still unclear. Yet Europe's health officials paved the way for the new vaccine in the region to encourage anyone who's not been vaccinated or boosted 
to battle the spiking COVID-19 infections. According to the EU, the two-dose vaccine from Novavax has passed the Commission's rigorous standards of efficacy, quality, and safety. Novavax from next January will start shipping to uh, shipping up to 200 million doses to the EU's 27 member states. All right, let's hope the vaccines could boost, you know, protection in the region. Uh, Yansing again, thank you so much for your report. We'll talk to you again soon.